Hello everyone and welcome back to series 2 of Lawrence Plays Factorio Angel Bobs. In this series I'm going to do things a little bit differently. Rather than running around on camera building things in front of you, um, because I think that's got to, I've got to the point in the game where things take a bit too long to actually build build up and, and I'm forever running back because I've forgotten something. What I'm going to do instead is get the, um, the builds done in advance and then have a bit of a talk about what I've done afterwards and do that in the videos. And I think that's hopefully going to be a bit more interesting and it should also be a bit easier for me to do and require less editing and so on. So let's see. Since the uh, last episode, there have been, well, been quite a lot of changes actually. I got uh, rather, rather into playing and done quite a lot of different things. So one of the problems I was having down here with this big ore sorting facility was there wasn't enough of the stuff I needed coming in and there was too much of some of the stuff I didn't need. So I was having all kinds of problems with tin and with lead and so on. So what, what I've now done is I've expanded out. I've got this station here that's dropping off tin ingots from another from another facility and over here I think yes we've got lead ingots in exactly the same way some being dropped off right now that's good timing and so that means I've got now an enormous flood of that coming through here because for my next project I needed enormous quantities of solder and that requires either lead and tin or tin and nickel I think it was and I wasn't producing those in anything like enough high enough quantities to do what I, I required and in fact as you can see from here I'm still not producing it fast enough to keep all of these facility factories running but it is however now producing enough that up here we've got um, 81,000 okay so that's gone that's gone really well that's got, got loads of that okay so in order to do that as, as you probably remember from the last series um, hopefully you've been watching them all up here we had a facility that was creating just iron uh, so that was that was working nicely the, as you can see these are both completely full so we've got iron got as much iron as we could possibly want and then next on over here there's the same sort of thing for copper so Angel Bob's has systems where you can import two of the ores in this case it's uh, styrotite I think Styro probably styrotite and crotinium you mix them together along with these catalyst things and then it will just output the particular ore you want so uh, copper in this case and then you can then feed that through various different processing steps to, and uh, eventually get out a steady stream of copper plates like this and we've got quite a lot of copper as well so again that's good that's going quite nicely and these two were both supposed to pick up the excess copper ore and iron ore that was produced by this big sorting facility down here and which which is why we've got these uh, things here stopping the flow of the input flow when we get too much of whatever it is, whatever the um, the ore is in question. So we've always got room to use up the stuff that's coming from below. So I'd, I'd already made those though, so that's not particularly exciting. What is a bit more exciting is over here we've got one that takes in the styrotite and the bobmonium and produces tin. So that's new, and it's a very very similar one to the car to the um, copper a copper facility, I believe, in that you've got the um, Actually, no, it's probably more like the iron. I don't know, they're all slightly different. So some of them require extra inputs at this stage, some of them don't. So from here, I've got a tin output here. So again, we've got full up on tin. But also, down here, I've got another one of these facilities. This is just producing ingots instead of plates. And they go to another station. So the, the ingots are being taken back to the processing facility to be turned into solder and anything else there that requires tin, like um, I think brass does. And then up here we've got plates that are taken off to factories that you require tin to be made into inserters and things like that. So we've got the two, the two outputs here. And it's also feeding onto the same same belt to take the crushed stone away and the same belt bringing in the um, bringing in the catalyst for this. So those are, those are a slight problem in that I've got this one these single belts going back and forth that uh, they, everything is relying on. So I need to get rid of that at some point. But for now it's, it's working well enough. Then finally further down these belts all the way over here we've got the same sort of thing with crotinium and rubite being turned into lead so again we've got um, flowing through the same sort of crushing and sorting and then smelting and here we're just making ingots because at the moment I don't have anything that actually requires lead plates I don't think maybe I do now I do have some things that require lead plates but I've not got around to actually building up anything to make those yet this also seems to be running a bit slower than I expected oh yes yeah, so there's not enough um, catalyst coming in which is just slowing this down a bit but it, it's working it well enough for now and we've got up here we've got yeah about four, five, 14 15 thousand are there so that's that is a train load at least so it's doing reasonably well and we're also producing sulfuric acid at a rate of knots as well and I'm to be honest struggling to get through all the sulfuric acid that's being generated I need to find I mean I could just flush it away but at the moment I'm trying to be sort of 
trying to trying to trying to save it. Okay, so that was one of the big things I did. But the reason I did those is because over here I built up this enormous unloading facility here that's taking out what have we got? We've got copper, we've got solder. I think I ended up not using this one because I can't count. Tin, plastic, wood, gold. Another one that's unused, maybe? Oh no, that's that's silicon ore, which we don't have enough of, and that's why that's brought the whole thing to a stop. And then aluminium ore, silver ore, iron and copper ore, uh so what are you? That one, that's another empty one apparently. Acid. And then what we're doing here is we're producing all of the different resources needed for the um, in order to produce all the different types of, well I say all the different types of circuits uh, which I'm, I'm making the two yellow types the reds and the blues all in the all in this one single massive bus area so at the bottom here we're making steam to make coal to make car uh, to make coke to make carbon then we're making tinned wires making resistors making silicon wafers well we would be if we hadn't run out of silicon and then the air is getting turned into nitrogen for some reason I forget exactly why that's needed we're making integrated circuits and transistors and uh, what's this this is copper wire here apparently oh I see you're right we've got, yeah we've got copper coming in along with the one that's making copper wire. and we're making the um, the basic electronics boards here it's basic circuit boards here and then passing them out and they're going up and down so up here we're making turning those basic circuit boards into basic electronics boards by putting resistors on them and adding the solder then we're doing weird things with water and cut and chlorine and making making this sludge stuff. What is it? Ferric chloride solution that's apparently needed for the more advanced circuits. And um, carbon dioxide and ammonia and, and hydrogen and all kinds of things. And up here we've run out of power apparently, so I'm going to need to come in and have a fix this. And then up here we're making the cellulose and so on to make the red circuits red circuit boards and then the red electronics boards again that these are all stalled because of the shortage of silicon and up here we've got the blue circuit boards and the blue electronics boards and then all of these yes I've, I've um i've been trying to keep these balanced by this by just going and finding where that wherever the uh, the bottlenecks are and just copying and pasting the thing over so there's some of these are um kind of getting kind of big and then these are all being fed back onto the bus here where they go all the way back down to my stations and get loaded up onto the different uh, train onto the um, in, into trains over here that can pick them up and take them off to wherever they're needed in the factory. So that it does, as you can as you can see by the fact that all these stations are filling up or have have filled up in some cases. This is is all basically working. It's just I've just it's just that I've run out of the silicon, so I'm going to need to sort that out at some point. Ah, is that a silicon? Yes, I think this is a um, yes silicon ore train has just come in apparently. So because down here. I am actually producing the silicon ore. It's, it's this one coming up here and going into these warehouses up here. But as you can see, there's only a couple of hundred in there. It's, it's being produced far more slowly than it's getting used up up here. So, but now this means we can see it flowing in. Yeah, it's getting turned into the silicon ingots and the silicon wafers, and then we're pumping the silicon wafers back out here, and then turning them into the uh, these electronics components. So, it's now got back up to sort of. Back up, back up and working. We should find that you find the circuit start running fairly quickly. So as you can see, this is quite a big endeavour, which is why in the, at the end of the last series I was working so hard to um, to clear out this whole area because I knew I wanted to build this factory up and it was going to take quite a lot of space. <sighs> so that was that was a big job, uh, but as you can see, it's an enormous yeah. There's an enormous amount of things going on down here. But the, uh, the diagram I had to, to help me help me get everything in the right place and get it all sorted, I didn't really worry about ratios while I was building it, which was, to be honest, probably a mistake. If I'd um, if I thought through the numbers in advance, then I could could have put in exactly the right number of all these machines, and rather than running up and down and going, oh, I'm, I don't have enough of this, I don't have enough of that, and trying copying and pasting it, it would have been a bit a bit more efficient. But eh, never mind. So that's going quite well. The next thing you probably notice is I've got all these, um, uh, what are they, the logistics complaints that I don't have enough of things. So what, the next thing I did after I ha after I built up all the, this, this bus to build all these circuits, so I thought, well, off the other side of the bus, I could start building all of the stuff I'd need for a mall. So all the... All the basic components that the that the, the factory needs, so that all the all the machines and and everything will do all the building. So 
I've got some sub factories down here. I've got this, this one here that's producing engines at a massive rate, and then another one making turning those into electrical engines. I'm building out of the crushed stone that comes in from all the all the um, ore refining. I'm, I've got that making stone and bricks and landfill. So I've got that was that drained. In fact, that drained almost all of my um, crushed stone from down here. If we look at the the big factory, uh, the ore factory, as you can see, these are now completely drained. I've used up all six um, warehouses worth because these were all packed. Uh, but I've used all that up <laughs> now. <laughs> it's all being swallowed up by the various different factories I'm building up. And then from there we also started making batteries. And so I had another set of um, unloading stations along here which I've only used eight, three, four, four, six, seven, eight of them so far for things like what's well, um, cobalt steel and invar, brass, aluminium, crushed stone, lead, iron, steel, so on. So they're all, all the things I didn't actually need for the circuits but I do need elsewhere are coming in there. And then being passed up here. So here we've got a little factory that's making all the different assembly machines and the electronics assembly machines. Now I'm not very happy with this bit of the factory. It's a bit of a, it's a bit of a sort of a twisted knot and I think it's going to cause me problems when I try and make assembly machine 3. Uh, this is quite nice. It's just a, st a steady sort of one, two, three, four, um, as it works across, and I like that. Um, even if I had to start building up above it as well, this one I should probably have done in the same sort of way. So this is this is a bit of a mess, but yeah, never mind. I can change that later. Then this one along here. This is the last thing I did. We've got um, I've got a small factory here making uh, pipes and gears, and another one making steel pipes and gears. And then along here we've got all the different. Pretty, well, not all of them, but most of the different things that I can that I need. So we've got things like oil refineries, we've got induction furnaces, I think, air filters, water refining, hydro plants, that's what they're called, um, flare stacks, and so on, all the way across here. And the idea is that if there's two things that are building the two generations of the same thing, so here we've got um, electrolyzers, I think, Mark 1 and Mark 2, I'm feeding one from direct from one into the other and then into a requester chest. Uh, provided chest, sorry. So I don't have an, I don't need to, and then I can just produce the, the highest tier of whatever I can make. So all the way along here, this is eventually, because I haven't quite got there yet, but eventually this is going to be all of the tier one, tier two, tier three, whatever tier I can get to using yellow and red circuits. There aren't any red circuits on here, but that's because <laughs> my factory isn't producing them quickly enough, I think. Uh, no, maybe I just haven't fed them in there yet. I don't know. I'm going to need to check that. And then the um, the basic materials and the iron and steel pipes down here. Anything that then requires blue circuits or aluminium or brass or whatever, I'm then planning to do up here. So take, for example, this flotation cell. When I want to make the next generation of that, that requires... Let's have a look. Uh, flotation cell one just takes clay bricks, steel plate. So that's, that's all stuff that's available from here because this should have clay bricks and red circuits on it. You make one for first Mark 1. Then for Mark 2s, you need to have aluminium, concrete, and brass. So all of that is going to be on a set of rails up here. So I can then sort of just pass the stuff up. And I think then typically the Mark 3s tend to need things like titanium and blue circuits. So those are going to be, again, another step up from there. And I think that should work quite well. It just means I need to make sure I leave enough space above here for all of the extra stuff I'm going to build. Carrying on upwards got three generations of radar here so that's presumably making I assume that's a nice uh, radar one radar two radar three and that means I'm now pushing out and here you can see so I am using the aluminium and the brass for that so I'm now I've now told it to upgrade all of my radars and radars have actually finished which is quite nice so all of the all the radars at least that are inside a catchment area of my um, robot port should now be radar three like that one and that's going to push the range out that I can see quite a bit, which is, so this is, yeah, now a bit more radar range all the way around the edge of the base, except places like up here that aren't inside the RoboPort area, so they've just not been upgraded. Then finally at the top here, this is, this is a bit, this, this is in fact a bit of a mess. I should have done this differently, but what, as you can see here, we've got, um, Robo, we've got, we're making Mark 1 RoboPorts here out of, well, the various different we've got the, the three different components required to make them and all of the different subcomponents required to make those so that's making the mark ones and then the mark twos are being made in this area which is the same sort of general idea but it requires bearings it requires brass gears it requires goodness knows what else 
uh, batteries apparently. So they're all being fed around here and this is making the Mark IIs. And so these, and that is why we've got all these machines out here trying to up, waiting for upgrades. It's all of my robo ports that are trying to go from the old red old style red ones to the nice new blue ones. Also up here, and this I have made significantly more neatly and I'm um, a lot happier with. We've got a system we've got a small factory here that's making the um, the brains and the arms and the base unit uh, what they call frames for the two types of robot opt. And then those are being fed on this belt round here to this factory here which is doing exactly the same thing for the two types of um, Mark II robots. And so I'm gradually trying to upgrade all of my robots from the old yellow ones to the nice shiny red ones. And as an, part of the re and, and, and an attempt to sort of to actually switch them over rather than just building loads of new ones. Because the, th the thing is if you just have a mix of robots when you ask for something to be done you're going to get a lot of the old slow ones doing it as well as the nice new shiny ones. And that means everything just takes longer because the ro old robots move much more slowly. Let's see if we can find an example. Yeah so here, here we go. The red robots are the new ones and as you can see they're moving quite a bit well probably about 50% faster than the old ones than the old yellow ones um, and so I'm gradually trying to get rid of all of the old ones the problem is I don't know how many of them I've got but so what I've done is that in various places I've put um, filter inserters on the robot ports that are pulling out the three old types of robots so there's the old um, the old construction robots, the old logistics robots, and the very old construction robots and they're just getting pulled out, shoved in these uh, provider chests and then up here we've got requester chests and we'll just take them out and feed them onto this belt here so we're not just making even more new ones. In fact I could probably find out how many of those I've got to deal with. If we look down here... where is it? Here we go. We can tell that I've made... okay I only made... apparently I only made 619 tier 1 uh, robots, uh, it's construction robots, and 679 tier 1 logistics robots. Now this actually needs to be stopped because I don't want any more of these to be made. So let's get rid of all of that. And the rest of it, I'm kind of happy just to leave this sat here. I don't really care too much about the resources that are sitting in this area. It's all relatively cheap stuff. Um, I'm going to need one of them in there. Right, so that's going to stop me shoving any more of the old style robots into the, into the logistics network at least. Um, and that can go wherever, I don't care. Okay. So. Yeah, so I'm gradually trying to remove all of the old bots from the network. But that is, is quite a long and time-consuming process. Right, I think that's a good quick summary of what I've been up to since the, um, since the last series. So what I'm going to do now, um, over the next sort of few days I'll, I'll carry on playing I'll build this this probably build this bus up a bit more there's a couple of things I want to do I want to I want to take off um, construction of the of this catalyst to somewhere else where it can be done hopefully a bit more efficiently and then dropped in by train into these into these areas just, and just dropped off a train load at a time rather than having one belt shell shared between all four of them and comes from this tiny little overworked facility down here so that's that that remains to be done I need to make silicon ore some other way because there's just not enough of it coming in to keep this this um this factory running i'm going to tweak the factory a little bit try and iron out some of the bottlenecks as well so that'll help help speed things up a bit around here but generally yeah we'll um we'll see how it goes i'll carry on fiddling with things and building things up and i hope you'll join me to see what see what happens and i'm getting attacked what's going on up here okay i shall and i shall have a look at uh, places where i'm getting attacked as well and attempt to sort of bring a bit more um, peace to my uh, everything. Well, thank you for watching. I'm going to try and continue to do the episodes like this, I think, because this is going to be much, much quicker for me to do, for me to produce them, much easier, and I can get a lot more done in the game that way as well. So this, where is it? This facility here took me, I, I, would, I don't want to know how many hours this took me. Um, I'm on, let's have a look. 127 hours of, of this game now so this particular map that's quite a lot that's absolutely terrifying um, but yeah I, I'm sure you're glad I didn't make you sit through it all 
but I'll continue to talk about the uh, the, diff the different bits I've done. If there's any of the bits that you found interesting that I've skipped over a bit too quickly, let me know in the comments and I can go over them in a bit more detail. But until next time, thank you for watching and let's see what I can get up to next time. See you then.